was surprised by how much I liked Joker Folia de. I wasn't a huge fan of the first film, and based on the mixed reviews for the sequel, I was expecting another disappointment. But I actually really enjoyed this movie. As far as Todd Phillips' sequels go, this one is a lot more Hangover 3 than Hangover 2. It's not just a rehash of the original, it does something so radically different that it barely feels like the same thing anymore. It's part prison movie, part courtroom drama, and part musical. I don't think people who loved the first film will enjoy this one all that much, but as someone who found the first film to be derivative and superficial, I found the sequel's change of pace refreshing. With a meta trial storyline and a frank deconstruction of the Joker persona and the people who unwisely idolize it, Folia Deux feels like a response to the response to the first movie. Joker 2 is fully aware that its existence is unnecessary, but I wasn't bored for a second. This video will contain full spoilers for Joker Folia Deux. I didn't hate the first Joker movie. Joaquin Phoenix's performance was spectacular, Lawrence Scher's cinematography was gorgeous, and although the whole you get what you fucking deserve thing was a bit cringy, that climactic talk show sequence was suitably tense. But I can't say I was much of a fan. It felt very, we have Taxi Driver at home. After the polarized reviews came in, I was expecting not to like Joker 2, but I ended up liking it quite a bit, maybe even more than the first one. This time, Phillips takes his cues from a different Scorsese movie. As a toxic relationship drama crossed with a lavish Golden Age musical, Folia Deux is a comic book reimagining of New York, New York, which I'm much more on board with. There's no room for improvement in Taxi Driver, but there is a lot of room for improvement in New York, New York, Scorsese's extravagant failure. Joker 1 is just a poor man's taxi driver and a poor man's king of comedy, but I enjoyed Joker 2 a hell of a lot more than I enjoyed New York, New York. Sing hallelujah, come on, get up. <laughs> Phoenix probably won't win Best Actor this time around, but he's just as compelling in his second turn as Arthur Fleck. And on top of that, I think the supporting cast is more memorable in the sequel than in the first one. The only weak link is Harry Lorty as an insufferably smarmy Harvey Dent. Catherine Keener is typically fantastic as Arthur's lawyer, although she's quickly swept under the rug when he decides to fire her and defend himself like Vin Diesel in Find Me Guilty. Brendan Gleeson has a really disturbing dynamic with Phoenix as an abusive prison guard who bullies Arthur. He's at times darkly funny and at other times really sinister, and Gleeson nails that balance. Lady Gaga steals the fucking show as Harley Quinn. This version of Harley flips the script. This time, she's the one who gaslights and manipulates the Joker, not the other way around. I didn't think anyone could upstage Joaquin Phoenix in a Joker film, but Gaga manages to draw the spotlight away from him whenever she's on screen. Hey, no touching! No touching! No touching! No touching! No touching! No touching. The film's musical elements have been a point of contention for some people, mostly edgelords who think musicals are woke and feminine. But I loved the musical interludes. The song choices tied in with the story's themes really well. It was a great way to delineate Arthur's romantic delusions from his harsh reality, which wasn't so clear in the first film. And above all, the musical numbers are really cinematic, with rich colors, high contrast lighting, and incredible music. There's about a 50-50 split between Phoenix songs and Gaga songs, and while I enjoyed them all, I have to say Gaga's are by far the best. Phoenix is a pretty decent singer, especially considering he's sharing the stage with one of the world's best. But Gaga's musical numbers are undeniably stronger. Her intoxicating stage presence translates to the screen beautifully. I've seen the courtroom storyline compared to the Seinfeld finale, which is a pretty apt and hilarious comparison. Like the Seinfeld finale, it puts its protagonist on trial, shows news coverage from the highly publicized court proceedings, and brings back previous guest stars to testify for the prosecution. It was an interesting premise for the sequel, but it ultimately means that Joker 2 spends a lot of its runtime hung up on its predecessor. But it doesn't just use the courtroom scenes to recap previous events, it also interrogates the original film. It gets to the bottom of whether or not the Joker really is a separate personality, and whether Arthur has any remorse for his murder spree, and it puts the meme notion that you missed the point by idolizing him directly into the text. Joker 2 builds to a bleak, depressing, anticlimactic ending that might be the most 70s thing this franchise has done. While that final scene is appropriately disturbing, I was left wondering what they were trying to say. The first movie had a very simple message, we need better mental health services. But at least it had a message that was clear. I'm not sure what the message of the sequel is. Don't fall in love with a liar because they'll just break your heart. Don't represent yourself in court, hire a professional attorney. Don't rile up a violent cult because eventually your followers will turn on you. The message is a bit muddled, but honestly, I enjoyed the ride so much that I don't really care what it all meant. No one knows what it means, but it's provocative. No, it's not. It's it gets gross. the people going. I can't imagine a die-hard fan of the original Joker film liking this sequel all that much. It has a very different tone and style and narrative to its predecessor. 
But as someone who found the first one to be shallow and derivative, I thought the second one was a breath of fresh air. Maybe it's because Megalopolis came out last week and anything that came out this week would look good by comparison, but I like Joker 2 a lot more than I thought I would. Take that with a pinch of salt. Like I said, if you like the original, you probably won't like this one. But if you didn't love the original, you just might love this one. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you liked the video. Remember to like and subscribe and click on the little bell. And also seize the day and call your mom and be kind to yourself.